Today we've moved into Bill Lieben's office, and Bill is our marketing director. Bill's uh, a great guy. He knows everybody in the industry. He uh, works with the reviewers. He works with um, just everybody that's that's the magazines. You know, the guys at Hi Fi Plus, great magazine. Still, you know, it was funny. Now this might sound weird, but. We were sniffing this thing. I mean, wow, this is a classic. I think this is an oil-based, uh, it's one of the original, I mean, it's really slick paper and it, it just, remember how magazines used to smell? Um, I think, well, this one, it's not a bad smell. It's just, wow, it just brings back memories. Anyway, what have we got going today? Uh, Din <coughs> in the United Kingdom. Paul. What happens during component burn-in? Oh boy, <laughs> there's a can of worms. Uh, and how long does it take? How do you know if a component is fully burned in? Yo, yo, yo. Well, yeah, God. Burn-in is probably one of the most controversial subjects I can imagine. Nah, cables, cables are worse. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the the tweaks and the pucks and the dots and all that that's that's the green lines so that's worse okay so in order of appearance uh, component burn in is right up there so generally in high end audio it's it's thought that components t need time to burn in the the naysayers who who don't buy into any of that will tell you now it's the person burning in not the not the uh, equipment itself, you know, and 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 we know that's not true because we can take and and we routine we, we routinely do as part of our process here. Uh, we will burn a product in and compare it to one that hasn't been burned in to see what sound quality differences are. So if they're extreme, like uh, oh, what's a good example? The Stellar, the Stellar series, the Stellar. Uh, the M700 mono blocks. For whatever reason, we discovered that they can take days upon days to even sound good. Okay, and we we do this on a regular basis, whether it's a BHK or whether it's whatever the product is. <clears throat> we'll listen to it burned in and not burned in, and some of them sound pretty damn good right out of the box, and they get better as as you burn them in and you use them and have them plugged in. Others sound like, yo, not so good, and it's going to take days to get them to sound right. And for those, like on the M700s, we now, uh, because we don't want our customers pulling it out of the box with, you know, here we are with a 30-day guarantee, right? And they pull it out of the box and they go, ugh. Uh, and we're oh, just let it burn in. You know, it's going to need a week or so. <clears throat> and a lot of people just go, no, 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 and they'll send it back. So what we do is on that kind of a product, and, and I'd like to do it on everything. We just don't have the space. I mean, we we are busting at the seams. Um, in fact, we just put a bid in on a on a new building uh, to try and get us some more some more room. But anyway, um, we we burn in M700s. We'll burn them in, I think, for 48, uh, geez, maybe even longer, um, 72 hours. I, I don't really remember what it is, but it's at least 48 hours that when, you, when a, uh, an M700 Stellar is built, they go onto a rack, they get burned in. Now, power plants, they get torture tested for a few hours, but that's different. That's, that's for testing. This is just straight burning. So what happens? Um, one thing that we know that happens is capacitors form. So a capacitor is a, is a sandwich, uh, depending on how it's built. Let's just take a film capacitor. It's sort of a sandwich of an insulator and a um, conductor. So simplest way to think about that is if, if I were to use um, this piece of paper, so electricity doesn't travel through paper, right? It's, and, and there are actually paper uh, capacitors that there's usually film capacitors and but when the, when we when we talk about the kind of capacitor it is uh, paper film oil 
uh, we're talking about the dielectric in that, which is the insulator. So if I wanted to um, build a capacitor, I might, I would take a piece of paper, let's say, and, and let's pretend that this is a piece of tin foil, and I would, I would place that like this, and I would start, and I would roll it up into a thing so that I have alternating layers of, uh, of uh, dielectric, insulator, something that doesn't conduct electricity, and a layer of something that does conduct electricity. And uh, through that process, uh, I'm not going to try and explain caps right now because it's not important, but through that process, um, we, we build a capacitor. And capacitors, they, what they're valuable when we send signals through them because they will not let DC, battery voltage, won't pass through a capacitor, but AC, moving like music, will pass through. So if we have moving voltage, AC, alternating current, that will pass through a capacitor, and if we have battery voltage, it will not. So this is very helpful for a number of things, uh, from filters to blocking capacitors, etc. And uh, uh, we use bigger things called electrolytic capacitors in the power supply, and that, those are the ones, all, all capacitors have to form when you put voltage on them, little you know, microscopic holes are filled, and it changes the, um, the equivalent series resistance and a number of other characteristics when we form a capacitor. And that's usually done for a, uh, a power supply capacitor. And they, they act different if they've been on for a while. So that's one of the most obvious things. I will tell you that while I hear burn-in, while I acknowledge it and recognize it, I, I don't fully understand it by any means. We can point to several things that are probably beyond the scope of this, capacitors being one, that are affected or impacted by it. Uh, but do I have a complete answer? No, I, I certainly don't. But, but, it, but it is real. So the other part of his, oh, I mixed the pages up, making my capacitor. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, how do you know if it's fully burned in? You have to, you have to listen. You have to just, uh, you know, it, things can burn in over a year for whatever reason, but that's very gradual, and I doubt you'd hear it from one to the other. But I can walk into the music room and hear if there's a brand new DAC in there. I can tell that it's new, and it's it's kind of stiff. It it needs it needs breaking, and my DAC's been on for a few years and it's, it instantly works. What's interesting about uh, uh, burn-in, and this could be capacitor related again, is it lasts. If I take a burned-in DAC, unplug it, put it in my car, and drive it over to my buddy's house and plug it back in, it's still burned in. And how long that effect stays with it. It doesn't stay forever. If you have something sitting in the closet for 10 years that was originally burned in, it may sound different than original, but it's going to lose whatever characteristic is, 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 is happening there. So you're just going to have to listen. Some, some, some products take uh, an hour. Some products take a couple of weeks. So I, I can't tell you any more than that. Hope that answered your question. Thanks.